Hi Capricorn, this is your December 2020 tarot forecast. So this is for Capricorn Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. All right guys, what do you need to know for December? If you are returning to my channel, this is a new deck, I really hope you like it. Uh, if you're new, I hope you like the new deck. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And also, congratulations, you made it through a crazy year. So yay, pat yourself on the back. What a year. All right, so what do you need to know for the last month of the year, guys? Messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for December 2020. Messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, Capricorn. Venus. This is for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. This is for cross watchers too. Sometimes you just have a Capricorn in your life and you want to learn more. So welcome to the cross watchers. Messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Well, the cards are jumping, just not upright. Or face up, I should say. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, guys, so let's get out your Celtic cross. As always, I will get a oracle card, an oracle card from each of the decks. Okay, wow. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> Let's get into it. Holy smokes, guys. Yes, Five of Pentacles in your recent past. Uh-huh. Okay. Wow. You have so much good going on here. Yes, let's put an end to something difficult. Let's count our blessings. Let's count our blessings here, guys. So we have some nice spirited energy back here. We have a couple of fives. There's going to be some chaotic um situation here in your recent past you're going to be coming out of this though and then there's going to be a little situation here with how you see yourself just like i said try to look at the positives here guys because there's going to be a little challenge around your emotions so here in the bottom of the deck or the basket that your reading sits in as it were is some loyal creative energy this is really nice spirited youthful energy here guys right so <coughs> excuse me so, creative um, attitude, creative outcomes, creative adventure. Uh, this is a very exciting energy. It's quite youthful, so it's something that's just beginning. Um, we do have the page here who would like to go to war. He would like to be the king. He would like to be looked up to, but he's got a lot of proof. So there's a lot of potential here, but this guy has a lot to prove. But he's coming from a good place, and he's very warm, and he's full of energy. So that is nice to see. The situation is the star, so hope and healing. Um, qualified or um, challenged here by the Ten of Cups. So hope and healing around a situation having to do with your home. It could be part and parcel of why we have this Four and Five of Cups here. Because what I've found over the years is the Ten of Cups is not the same relaxed feeling as the Ten of Pentacles, for example. The Ten of Pentacles suggests that we can relax now. Okay, we have what we need and we can share it and we can invest and we can enjoy the fruits of our labor. The Ten of Cups suggests to me that there is pressure around perfection. The pressure to create or um, to um, keep going <laughs> this extremely happy home, the face of a happy home, the having everything you need emotionally. Um, those types of things in real life are kind of, uh, what's it called when you, uh, wow, words today, sorry guys, when you fluctuate. So there just could be a little bit of pressure around the fluctuating emotions regarding your home and how much pressure you could be under here. With the hope and healing or the 11th house energy here with Aquarius ruled energy, you have this sense of sort of like on the surface holding it down, right? And doing what you need to do for the status quo. This is Saturn ruled. I consider it Uranus ruled. But historically, 
Um, it is Saturn ruled. So there's a lot of uh, severity. However, warm Aquarius energy looks in a group of people, in a group environment, at a party, at an event, at work. This looks like really warm and inviting. One on one, this can be quite temperamental and cold. So how this is playing out, like are you trying to balance this sense of yourself within a relationship where you know you have to get a little bit closer to somebody or you have to you know, emotionally open up here or there's an emotional uh, bounty or awareness or you know, you're getting to that next stage or you know, family, fatherhood, motherhood, leveling up here within a happy home situation is like causing a little bit of panic, causing a little bit of stress. And it's not that it's not desired and it's not that it's not possible. It's just, like I said, with the Ten of Pentacles, it's like, oh, okay, you've already earned it. Now you just get to have a beautiful meal and sleep in a really big bed. And the Ten of Cups, you're like, oh God, we have to keep this going. <laughs> you can't just go to the bank and put in some money and then withdraw from it. You have to constantly work at this. So this is where the Ten of Cups for me, believe it or not, can be or become kind of stressful. Even though on the surface, it looks like that's what everyone wants. And that's even what you want and there's no harm in that, but it's work. It's going to take some work and it might even include some healing or hope. Um, you may find that whatever energy that you are putting into the sense of fulfillment and happiness in a crowd, whatever that crowd is for you, Capricorn, I don't like really doesn't matter. Work, play, anywhere in between, your neighbors, okay, whatever it is, that this is easy in a group. This is easy when it's not someone super close to you. And that might even bother you or it might bother someone in your environment or you might just becoming aware, be becoming aware of it or this might be like the first time you thought of that. Or you know what, Capricorn, this reading might not even be for you and you might want to look at other readings that um, resonate. But for anyone this is resonating with, this can be just like, yeah, this is a little bit of pressure, especially, you know, it's December, guys, like whether you celebrate or not, there's just a lot of pressure that belongs in December that doesn't belong in other months. And like I said, it's been a crazy year. So I think that you're generally speaking, though, you're learning a lot about yourself nonetheless. So we have the Empress at the Foundation and the Six of Swords here crowning you. So the foundation is some goddess energy. We have some, um, you know, Venus. We have that Taurus, Libra energy, the beautiful balance between the male or the masculine, divine masculine, divine feminine energies. But again, I think we are looking at a sense of, you know, motherhood, protecting um, birth. There could be birthing parents. There could be a new mother here. There could be the desire to have a child. But goddess energy is really saying, you know, bounty. There's an enormous bounty here. She has a lot of love to give. She has a lot of creativity to explore. She's incredibly rich. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm not sick. I don't really know what's happening. But um, yeah, so she is feeling really fine. Um, but she's also, like I said, there is a sense of pregnancy. There is a sense of burgeoning, growing, growth potential. There's a lot of positivity, a great deal of good news here as well. I would say in the Empress, she has a lot to offer you and anyone around you, okay? She's extremely positive. She's extremely um, creative, abundant, and there's enormous fulfillment here as well. So I think here with the crowning you with the Six of Swords, as you can see, Get to mentally move away from something that isn't serving you anymore is how I would read this as well I would just you know enjoy the moments that exist and get out of your head or you know leave an argument or some self low self-esteem behind like I do think that you're aware of what it takes here and that's part of the pressure to create this abundance and fulfillment and this type of thing you just almost have to convince yourself um, and move away from choppy waters or troubled waters, even in your own mind. This could even be short-term travel over water. Movement nonetheless, okay? So movement here. Movement around leveling up, around fulfillment, investment, bounty. Um, and a lot of potential. 
Here in your recent past is the five of pentacles. So this is, you know, feeling rejection, left out in the cold. It's the only card in the tarot that shows snow, unless you're dealing with a Christmas tarot deck. But um, this is just cold. There, there's some Saturn energy here as well. They're feeling left out, they're feeling rejected. This is nice to see in the past position, but there is an opportunity here to ask for help. There is an opportunity. You and a loved one were definitely suffering together. Sometimes people do this, whether it's not you or your person, it could be a coworker, whoever it is here for you guys. Sometimes, you know what they say about misery? Like it loves company, right? So it could just be like someone bringing you down or you bringing someone else down and you just trying to be there for them while being in their space or vice versa. Just make sure that one of you reaches out for help. One of you needs to reach out for help here or to not find so much satisfaction in that disappointment, in that rejection, because your near future is an inability to see what's right in front of you, something very positive and uplifting and possibly even holy that's being presented to you. So this is disenchantment. This is boredom. It's emotional boredom. You're bored. Look, she just literally doesn't care. She's like, yeah, I already have three of them. Who cares? And again, there could just be like this overemphasis on perfection around the home, around healing the home, around, the, you know, the appearance, okay, how other people, how your social community, your, your community at large, brotherhood, sisterhood, humanity, envisions this and how much pressure you're really under that you're putting yourself under versus what kind of, like what pressure are you under? Who says you're under pressure? Who's saying that? Who's doing that? Why, etc. So definitely something that, you know, you and one other person here where you see eye to eye about something, even though it's a rejection or a loss. But yeah, I would be a little bit careful just because we do have the five showing up right after this. So just Maybe be aware of your emotional world. Maybe don't get wrapped up in someone else's emotional world. Someone might even try that here. Try to be solutions minded. But you know what? Like I said, we do have two fives. So there's just going to be a little bit of chaos there. Um, maybe just try to roll with it. But try to remember what you do have is pretty precious. Or if something is offered to you, if there is an offering of love or peace or hope um, or security or serenity, like maybe don't turn that down. Maybe add it, maybe add an, uh, it could even be an apology here. It could even be, I know it's not the night. I know it's not a page. <laughs> so there's no actual communication, but it could even just be like a heart space. Like maybe you need to make an offer. Maybe they need to make an offer. Try to make up for this. But there is some severity, right? We do have more Aquarius energy here with the King of Swords, uh, you know, cutting all through the garbage, concise, clear. There could even be some legal contract information, legal contracts, um, cold, cutting, severe, knowledgeable. This person definitely has the facts. Um, but they are not there to make your day better. They are there to prove a point. So let's look at him in a second. How you see yourself is uh, disappointment, loss. Another card of rejection. The Five of Pentacles is literally rejection, feeling left out in the cold, being rejected, um, you know, physically in a practical way. This is emotional rejection. It is curious to me what he's concentrating on. If he just turned around, he'd be able to see what's left. But just be aware here of what you're focusing on. Like you can move from choppy and troubled waters. You just have to make a point to do that. But um, and the bridge, the bridge is kind of busted. So you might have burnt a bridge here. Maybe that's what you'd right, like to fix. Maybe you missed an opportunity there and you're like, oh shoot, like I missed it. And now I burnt my bridge. 
and now I have to pay some sort of price here. But not all is lost. You still have, you know, someone, someone is definitely helping you out or willing to help you out or seeing eye to eye here. Remember, this is still a couple of some sort and we still have the two cups here. So it could just be that something so close to you, you can't see it or that it's caused or is causing so much stress that you'd almost just rather not right now or it's becoming too intense. And it's almost like you don't want it to destroy you, so you're going to destroy it first. I really hope that's not the case because it seems like it's pretty real. But maybe just something to get to the heart of here, right? Um, here in the How Others See You is the King of Swords, right? And I was just talking about him, how severe he is. Um, yeah, this is pretty cold energy, guys. It's the coldest king. Um, he has all the facts. He's definitely made a decision. He's got extraordinary clarity, but it is has nothing to do with the heart. So it could just be that you made up your mind here, though. Like your mind does um, control everything else and it controls. Obviously, you have to think a certain way in order to feel a certain way. You have to feel a certain way in order to act a certain way. You have to act a certain way in order to produce certain things. So we went from uh, swords, cups, um, wands and then pentacles and sort of that's what I was gravitating toward here so there is a sense of like oh you know icky emotions I'd rather not this is so disappointing to cool let's just make up our mind here once and for all so there is like a mental severity that could be necessary is what I'm suggesting here this might be a good position to be in here frankly guys in terms of how others see you definitely in a position of mental prowess mental power, having all the facts, all the information, being able to make severe and um, concise decisions. I do want to mention this might have to do something to do with contracts, the law, legal agreements. Uh, this also could have to do with institutions, not including banking. Um, so legal institutions, um, mm, draftsmanship, uh, anything having to do with you know, the mind, like um, internet, uh, medicine, these types of things. So this is a very mm, mentally intense person. And again, back to Aquarius energy, far better in groups. This is an energy, not necessarily a person, if this is you or someone in your environment, this energy does better in groups of people and is well liked and possibly even promoted as long as they're in a group of people. This person or energy in a close one-on-one -on -one relationship is going to have, is going to fight back. This is not an energy that um, naturally comes together and finds it easy to constantly work at the happy home, the full heart situation. So just throwing it out there. Capricorn, you might also find as well that you have some Aquarius in your own chart or heavy Aquarius um, individuals that you're dealing with as well. All right, so in your hopes and fears, you have death. It's actually nice to see there. And then in your outcome or advice, you have the three of wands. So let's look at death for a minute. So this is a Scorpio energy, eighth house energy, sex, death, rebirth. This is total transformation. The cool thing about the death card is that you do know that something needs to go to the wayside. These fives need to be put aside permanently. This inability to look at something precious um, as something precious, like this is a decision that you have to say, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm going to accept that I need to, at some level, to some degree here, appreciate and not only appreciate, but acknowledge and appreciate my heart space and become vulnerable there. And that might be a tough task for you or someone in your environment. This is something you need from someone in your environment. Right? This is a general reading. <laughs> but uh, ultimately what the death card is saying is total transformation. The cool thing about it is that this is forthcoming. This is something that's, you know, it's a matter of time. You either invited this or you're like, okay, I'm ready. Or you're just going to be like, okay, good. It's tough, but good. It's not a tower moment. It's not going to be removed from you um, and be upset in that way. This might even be a nice release. So the death card here in your hopes and fears is that you get to totally transform away from any of these fives. <laughs> these fives and, you know, the, the chaos. 
Okay, you get to put an end to that. Primarily, I'm gonna suggest here because of a decision, a very firm, severe decision that you've made with facts and evidence and with your mind, full well knowing it um, influences your heart space. So that's incredible personal knowledge and personal growth. And then we have your outcome, right? Or advice is a three of wands. So, you know, what are you waiting for? What are you looking for? What are you working so hard for? What do you want the most? You know, we have this, um, we have the page. So there's a lot of excitement and effort. There, I do feel more than anything, this is just a minor disappointment. It's just a minor disappointment. It's not going to be a big deal. Try not to get wrapped up in negative emotions or something not working out. Maybe spending a little too much money that you, maybe you under budgeted. You know what? The money will come back in. Something didn't work out in your heart space. You know what? You just learn from it. Take a lesson and learn from it. Keep your eye on the prize here and keep bold. Keep bold. Keep that spirited energy. Stay excited. Because something positive is on the horizon. Your ships are coming in. You can look forward to something very positive here. Let us go qualify that for you guys. What is a Capricorn looking forward to? Wow, the star again. Tell me more about this three of wands as the outcome or advice. Wow. Lots of healing around an old wound. And it could just be as well that there's just like I was saying at the beginning of the reading, just December can be tough for a lot of different reasons. It's not just because of the crazy year we've had. It's not just because there's a lot of different celebrations going on and people may or may not participate. It could just be that it's just a difficult year to be away from friends and family. Okay, like there's still crazy stuff going on in the world. I'm not going to get into it. You already know. It could be that that's the disappointment. So maybe you just have to put some of these fears to rest and accept things the way they are here. And maybe look forward to a new adventure or a new way of doing things. I mean, this is an adventurous card. And that one was all flippy floppied as I was shuffling when I looked down. So, wow, two of them came out. Okay, so I've qualified the three of wands here, guys. So the first two cards to have come out was the three of swords and the star. So definitely healing old wounds, definitely. Definitely this is an old, old, old wound. <laughs> you don't want to bring this back though. So look forward to healing this, right? Look forward to healing this broken heart, possibly third party situation. I would say if you don't have a third party situation, do not get into one. Do not allow one. If someone is in your face about a threesome, I'm just putting this out there because it just popped into my head. Please don't bother. Just please don't bother. It's going to sound like something. It's going to sound like something it's not. Someone might even just say this is going to add or this is going to make something better or this is what we need. It is not what you need. It is not what you need. You need to celebrate stability and I'll tell you why. Because this is what needs to be healed. The horizon involves a healing. This was out first. A healing of a third party broken heart situation. This could just be from your own past. It doesn't have to be an, another lover within a relationship. It can just be someone letting you down from your past and it coming back up. That needs to be healed. That needs to be looked at and healed once and for all. And then these two jumped out. The Three of Cups with the Queen of Pentacles. Yeah. On the horizon is a celebration of total stability and receptiveness, personal growth, right? Look at this Empress down here at the foundation, no less. These have very, very similar energies. I'm not going to say identical. They just don't. This is a major and this is Capricorn ruled. But she's stable. And she's honest and look at how bright and yellow it is in the background so sunny so warm so I would say spend more time celebrating what you have what's going right choose stability don't choose a fleeting moment I mean if this is uh, if this is playing as a flirt and somebody who's just looking for a good time and you want to shake things up because you are getting too close, God forbid, and maybe you're, some people do this subconsciously. They, they shake things up because things are getting too tight, too close, too real, even though it's what they say they want. So, 
And you know, the flip side of that too. Wow, these are coming out in plumps. The other side of that is to suggest that if you do want excitement outside of the family unit, unit here, or a relationship, or a job, whatever this is for you, I would just say, be clear, be clear about who you're dealing with here. Be honest, at least be honest. Even if you're accused of being cold or calculated, even if it's the end of something, like a permanent transformation, something is permanently transformed here. But I'm not, I don't even know why my head is going into a third party like love situation looking for excitement. Um, yeah, I would say if you are looking for excitement and you think it's outside of your relationship, you will be woefully disappointed, disappointed if your partner is suggesting that or trying to do that, it will lend to severe disappointment. Definitely goddess energy. There's a divine feminine that's um, playing a part here. I would really look at a sense of what you consider boring, uninspired, disenchanting. Why, why, why would that be? Is that because of someone else? Is that because of you? It, does it take two? Did someone promise you something, not deliver? Did you promise someone else something and then you just like lose your mojo? <laughs> um, honestly, all I'm gonna say is whether it's work, business, health or play, stay away from a third party situation. It's not gonna be fulfilling. It just isn't. Also, we have three threes. Bear with me, I wanna look at three threes. And we have deceit. Wow, okay, I didn't want to say that, but here we are. Capricorn, depending on which Cappy is watching, and as I said earlier, this message may not be for everyone, I would beware here around a situation and a happy home and a group or a community situation <laughs> that a third party situation is gonna cause problems, do not get involved. Just don't. If you do, it will not work out and it will be incredibly disappointing and there'll be so much healing having to take place and my question would just be why. <laughs> All right, so you have fear. We have rabbit jumping out. This is fear. Capricorn, really protect yourself this month here, guys. You might be pushed into something or feel pressured into something. God forbid it's you. Do not do this to somebody else. Don't pressure somebody else. But if you're pressured here and you have any misgivings or doubts about it, just follow your instincts. Don't go through with it. Be willing. Be willing to stand apart. Be willing to say, you know what? It, even if this is disappointing for you right now, in this moment, in this short moment, I've made, I'm the bigger person here and I'm going to make the decision for the both of us that I won't allow this to happen. This is not the way that I'm willing to move forward and totally transform with you. I need to do it a different way. Are you willing, or can you do that with me? Wow, I don't even know where this is coming from. This is just sort of like, just messages that I'm getting right now, but um, I would definitely protect yourself. Some fear here in the rabbit. Codependency, addictions are affecting your romantic life. Of course, that can be anything. Cigarettes, shopping, sex, TV, internet, iPhones, tarot videos. <laughs> I mean, whatever it is, right? What's the addiction here? Maybe it's the constant seeking. I'm gonna seek happiness somewhere else. I'm gonna constantly seek it in another situation. I'm going to invent situations that need healing. So what is it? What is the addiction? Um, can you live with it? Can they live with it? Nonetheless, they seem to be affecting your romantic life. Serenity, yeah, right? Like you really need to be mindful about what you're thinking. Move away from troubling thoughts here. Choose serenity. Choose a healthy mind here, guys. And then to be fair, look at this balance. Look at that balance. So I do consider this the card of Libra. Libra, of course, is seventh house. And this is partnerships. So listen, whether this is a um, close intimate romantic relationship or anything be in between, 
Just be careful what you're being pushed into or what you're pushing someone else into, the reasons why, what you're gonna get out of it, the price that's gonna be paid for it, because there's a great deal of wisdom here and I think you know what's gonna become of something. Even if it's a little sassy, molassy, and exciting, it's gonna be extremely short-term. That's, I'm just saying, if you're seeking short-term excitement, go for it. Um, if you're single and you wanna mingle, I think it could be fun. It's just gonna be disappointing. But whatever. But if you are in a couple, I would highly warn against a third party situation here of someone coming in, introducing someone, or having someone already in your life introducing someone else to a situation having to do with your emotions. Uh, because I think it's going to be out of boredom and it's short sighted. So, holy smokes, Capricorn, what the heck? That was your reading for December. I didn't expect any of that but I hope it was helpful. If you have a second, comment below. I love hearing from you guys. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video for your sign. Bye for now.